And once again, good evening, good evening, everyone. I'm the man, Brian Chewett. Welcome to MCM Ministries Bible LA Studios here. And as we bring to you our 6 p.m. broadcast over the Ustream SEO market and television, as we express to you the living word of God, and we come forward in our final part three of, of the promises of God, but we are sharing, sharing the strength of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6 is our foundation scripture and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the lord is his treasure the fear of the lord is his treasure with strength we understand that the treasure is the acknowledgement of god's wisdom and as i just expressed to understand the fear and the knowledge of the lord god has given you a power to come forward and a power to express yourself. But God is coming to you not to faint, that you might be increased in strength and go forward into the everlasting power that God has given you. As we move into this new day, this evening that has come before us and in some parts of the world, your day is just beginning. We express this time with all distractions around us from cell phones that should not be on to, to just the everyday distractions that we must deal with. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. In the ways of man there isn't much everlasting, but of deceit, hurt, pain, Dark shadows cast it away into darker, darker shadows. Your needs will have needs, but God can meet all your needs in one night, in one prayer. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Again, that's from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. He also is become my salvation. So, Let's go back to our daily prescription of going into Proverbs and reading two, two chapters a day. And as you fellowship more, you get around more skilled and professional people, brilliant journalists, let's say from the BBC, um, giving us good hard facts of the day. And you, re in return, are receiving God's, God's blessings to go forth with the task that he has set before you. God has anointed you and appointed you to become a leader. You may have had huge amounts of success, let's say as a concert promoter, actor, something, communications, and I share with you, that was my strength. Yet at the same time, you're not declaring an oath of poverty when you move into God's grace. Oh, I'm not gonna have the lifestyle of the rich and famous. You'll have a guarantee. You have a bigger and abundance of the lifestyle of the rich and famous because they represent the flesh, the promises of man. You, your riches of your own finance, financial success will be blessed abundantly. And you will be also blessed abundantly by the obedience of your offering, the obedience of your daily prayers, the obedience of, your, of getting into the word of God, the living sword, the living, the sword of the truth coming into your life the circumcision of your new heart casting away casting away the stony edges of the old heart and opening your eyes to see the supernatural you don't have to see a guarantee called faith faith you cannot see or touch birth from faith which is birth from hope hope faith and love the three rings of royalty that you are to wear with strength in your soul, in your heart, and it can never be removed. And God has never turned his back on us, but we constantly always turn our back to him when we are in sin. And sin could be from a simple lie to a simple task of, of drugs, simple di daily digestion of adultery. But we get away from that because sin becomes old we want something new 
We want something creative. And yes, 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 you can be your own outrageous self by speaking the truth. Because nobody likes to hear the truth, so do something outrageous and speak the truth. And you'll get a lot of attention. I speak from experience. Trust me on that. So, Psalms 21, verse 13. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Sing and praise thy power. Oh God, we love you. We take you into this arm, into this time. We bring you the eternity of your endless rhyme, the kingdom of God. But, God, we move into your strength. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the, is the strength in my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's from Psalms 27, verse 1. Get yourself a pad and paper, please, when you get to come to the Hewitt Channel, because uh, my wife and I like to share at times you're going to wear your dancing shoes. And when you go through one of our services, Bible studies, preaching, morning devotionals, because we want to give you more than just a one-verse scripture lesson. We're not just taking one verse of a scripture and running in with it, and yay, let's go. No, we're um, the real deal of ministry, and uh, my wonderful wife, Anita, with their many gifts, is coming forth into this land of this world, this footstool called Earth, and helping to reach those, reach higher heights, raising the praise. And we go in partnership with my MCN ministries, the Brian Tewitt ministries, our Bible ALA churches, our affiliates, our affiliates through our international crusades and missionaries from Kenya, Nigeria now, um, Cape Town, South Africa. We're praying into going into Pakistan, but we already have a nursery set up there through, through one of our, our, our sources. England we're going back to. We're going to be spending some longer time with that. We'll get in touch with our, our friends out there very soon. And going back, of course, to Canada, and our work continues here in the United States. God can give you what you ask for. Ask, seek, and knock. For the, and that comes from Matthew 7.7. 7. And a verse that I never get tired of expressing because it's your goal. It's your predestined goal that God has given to you at your birthright. But we have the free will, the power of choice is to take it, grasp it, eat it, move it. Or walk away from it with our sin. And that is, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. I wanted to share that to you again. And that again, that's from Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Wisdom and knowledge. You open up this treasure chest that someone discovered, let's say, in their backyard, but it had your name on it. And can you open it? And your neighbor is not quite saved yet, but you are. And when you open that, you see the supernatural love of, of God, His precious promises, His pictures of, of the glory of eternity. The days ahead, giving you the vision. And when you receive the vision, and you move forward in the task, God reveals slowly, at His time, at His pace, at His healing, the glory of His manifestation. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. You have the riches and honor and glory, the blessings. Take it. Move with it. Flow with it. Go with it. What more can one ask for out of life? In Revelations 
And I heard with a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. We want to move forward with our strength and get stronger every day as we move into his love, his glory. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for you and I upon Calvary. Christ gave you his life to die for your sins. And as he rose and resurrected from the manger to the tomb, God's life was there to provide you a pathway for strength. His grace is yours. Your strength, God's strength, he gives to you. It's there for the taking. It's there with our daily prayers. He renews your mind. He gives you the clarity of the mind to go forward. To keep your thoughts clear. And most important, to give you the peace of mind. Remember in your professional walks, your days at work, running corporations and You've got 20 million things going on in your head and five proposals, p proposals that are due by the end of the workday. It's time to, to have that mindset of clarity. Let God be your, be your CEO, your CFO, and understand that all of us have that need to be called leaders. But let's start with the basics first. Just like playing any sport, we start at home. If we are to round the bases and come back home, we must do this one base at a time. Yes, some of us will get a bunt or a single, double, triple, home run. But our home must be first of in order. We must be of the image of what God wants us to be and what he wants us to be. To move into that time and to move into the power of his calling, his love. And with this, brethren, you have an opportunity to be a witness to others. Luke chapter 10, verse 27, And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Love your neighbor as thyself. The world is now a global community. We can now speak to each other pretty much at the same time. We can go on Skype and see there's 16 million people just like us want to communicate to all aspects of the world. So let's use the tools of love, God's love, to move beyond the borders of the ways of man, to knock them down, to laugh at terrorism by, by just screaming the name of Jesus, and to educate the world away from confusion, but to have them educated and give them knowledge of the powerful word of love, which is spelled G-O-D. God, I love you. We need you. We take our experiences and we mold them and we lift them upon the altar. And we go, when we go to the altar and before the throne of God, we say, Lord, take me, love me, I'm yours. Command my thoughts so I, you can take my works and show me where you want me to be. Take me, love me, I'm yours. You are the fragrance of my life. From the manger to the cross, I walk in your steps. The measurement of not, not just my faith, but everyone's faith is how deep you want to be crucified daily on the cross with Christ. And we die daily. 
We lift up our repentance and our prayers daily. We receive new mercies every day by God. There's no leftovers coming from the day before, like Mama's dinner or your wife's dinner from the night before. We take it, we move it, and we take this opportunity to move into the light of the Lord. And as we are moving into the light of the Lord, God says, I love you. God says, I need you. Or we say to God, we need him. But do we understand? Well, God, do we want to understand God? Because let me tell you something. We have all of eternity to know the heart of God. So let's always open up our Bibles to know the heart of God. To move into this expression of truth that comes before us. Joel 3.16 sings out to us, The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Hope, love, hope, faith, and love. The strength. You are having your spiritual workout with Jesus. You are having this moment of going into the house of salvation, which you re were received in by the door of faith. Once again, you have Jesus as your doorman with God as your interior decorator, who provided that new heart for you. Today's world echoes confusions, from media mainstream stories that we see online in an instant. Old news mediums such as newspapers. What just happened the night before is suddenly old news. We bring the news of today's world and we see the sequences of what's happening in Europe, North America, states, South America, all around the world. South Pacific. And why do we have earthquakes such as Japan and Haiti? Prophecies being fulfilled. We are living at the end times of end times. So if you have turned your basic training of sin life over to the Lord, God bless you. But if you just have a, bunch, a bus ticket punched on your way to heaven, we have to do more than just sit on the sidelines. We have to get off the pews. We are our own church. We have to be a beacon and strong light of the Lord, and we can only do that by God's strength. Going to the gym will give us some physical strength and look pretty good for our spouses, our friends, our favorite journalists, but let's get into one understanding. We move into a new world, a new life. Do you want that? Do you want still to be of the same old, same old? Do you want to be, well, he's going to be seen at this bar at 5 o'clock on Friday. I'll catch up with him. And then when you realize perhaps this person needs some help, along the way and moves out of the territory, becomes self-sufficient, becomes uh, a father, becomes a provider, becomes a success, and becomes a part of God's army. Then we say, what's wrong with him? He was perfectly happy where he was. Well, that's because you were perfectly happy where he was, and that individual was nothing but a book off the shelf for you. God is not going to use you as a book off the shelf. God wants you to be a habitation for his glory. And with God's glory, we move into what we're just, we have been called to do. Let's go into other countries' 
crusades, teaching and preaching the Word of God as we did in Kenya, but invited to Nigeria, um, working on Australia. Pakistan has invited us numerous times, so we're still placing that in prayer. We're going back to England to stay, spend more than a few time, a few weeks than we did before. And uh, also uh, Tanzania just recently came knocking on our door. So we ask you for your prayers and support. We thank you ahead of time. But we need, we're going to ask you to plant a financial seed into our ministry. Um, what we just expressed, we cannot do alone. We need you. But we guarantee that any seed you bless into our ministry is going to come back to you as a prosperous new light, a new growth in your life. And since we have this new relationship with the Lord coming and bringing us into a connection, if you want to learn more about myself, my wife, and our ministry, do visit us at bryanthewitt.com. That's bryanthewitt.com, or, or go to our main address at mymcn.com, mymcn.com. Uh, we have many programs, and one of them which is getting a lot of attention is called Educating Kenya, where most, most children education are stopped at the fifth grade because their parents um, cannot afford to go beyond the sixth grade and to high school. So we have worked together with our, with our partners, partners of Bishop Elijah Davy of Nairobi, Kenya, since setting up scholarship programs and to echo into the everlasting truth that come forward with us be a part of this. You'll be blessing those that will be blessed through the strength of academics and most important by the strength of the Lord. Again, BrianHewitt.com and MyMCN.com and you can visit us at any time of the day or night over Ustream. Just click over our channel applications of previous broadcasts that we have done. Our times that we go live are 6 a.m. in the morning Pacific Standard Time. My wife... Uh, Picks up everything at 11 a.m. mid mid afternoon service at 3 p.m. and right at dinner time 6 p.m. Uh, your, yours truly. And again, uh, visit us on YouTube, UStream, Facebook, and Twitter for these um, services that we are bringing to you. God, I never get tired of this, but God loves you. God created you before you are a twinkle in your grandfather's eye. And we go into this world knowing that there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. How do we see them? How do we acknowledge them? We, we practice, we get into the prayer, prayer life. We get into the scripture life. We open up the Bible, we let it breathe on us with God's love coming into it. This is one of the many Bibles that my wife and I use. Excuse me for a moment. And this is your beautiful love poem that God wrote, wrote for you. And it speaks from everything, from the creation to the revelation to being a whelp, a lion, and a lioness. The phases of your, pra phases of your praises. I will be speaking to that very shortly. But the phases of your praises is marching you like the tribe of Judah. Flags of color waving from your heart. The flags of, of the triumphant strength echoing out of your presence. God is using you as a habitation of his glory. And you are going to be like a magnet bringing others to you. Wanting to know more of your change. And it simply comes by this. By turning your life over to God. Romans 10.13 sings out to us. For whosoever shall be called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall be called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've gone from a sinful ways to a whosoever saved in the name of the Lord. And if it were the loved one who needs the Lord, bring them to any one of these broadcasts, bring them to church, go forward and make the public display of accepting God into your life. But right now, do repeat after me and just come forward to receive Christ in your life. Dear God, I admit 
I am a sinner. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place. I believe Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. Paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I am willing right now to turn away from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you and ask you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life. Send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me and take control. Fill me and take control and, and to make me the kind of person Make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. So be it. It is just the beginning with your new life with God. With your new life with God, and yes, you will be persecuted. Yes, you'll be despised, rejected of man. But Christ was persecuted every time, every day before he reached the cross. Who are we to complain? We share this message with you and it's a deepening message of the promises of God that we blend to you. God is sowing into your heart that new vision. God is sowing into your heart a new light. Come into the reality. Come into the Psalms. For Christ, you know I love you. I lay my heart before you. You are the reason why I live from the secrets of my heart. Christ, you know I love you. I lay my heart before you. I will climb up the smooth mountains, edge, edges of the mountain. I don't need to climb up the rough edges of the mountain. You have laid a path for me. I am on that path. You have given me the, the blessings of your obedience from hope faith and love. My house is the house of salvation. My fire is the fire of your love. And the weapons may form against thee, but they shall never prosper. The weapons may come, but they shall never, ever prosper. For in Jesus' name, you have that spirit. In Jesus' name, you are going forward and forward and deeper and deeper. In Jesus' name, for the Lord seeth, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the God looketh on the heart. Where is your heart? If you speak confidence of, yes, I will do it. Yes, I shall commit myself to the Lord but your heart is seeing the opposite, then let's pray into that. Move into that spirit. And the spirit is saying, Dear Jesus, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity, for your love and your glory. We, we ask you to, for this message of strength to be an abundance of blessing and strength for those who have listened to it and have them go forth and go and proclaim your living word of God. Go forth to be messengers of your love. For in Jesus' name, we love thee. I'm the man, Brian Hewitt. Au revoir, adios, good day for the people.